It's a, it's a C-clamp base, and then I'm going to do one of the angle bracket. So let's get into it here. Uh, these live solves are sponsored by Solidbox. Once again, uh, Solidbox very much helping us out with the channel this season. So let's do a live solve of this part here, sponsored by Solidbox. If you ever need computers for CAD, talk to the guys over at Solidbox. They'll definitely take care of you. But when it comes to creating a model like this, any anytime you receive a model, a drawing, whether it's a hand sketch or whether it's a professional drawing or even maybe something for school if you're a student, uh, and this, this is uh, advice that applies across every CAD system, what you want to do at first is you want to look at that model and you want to come up with a basic game plan. And what I usually do is I kind of unbuild the model uh, in reverse. So I think to myself, you know, what's going to be the very last feature? What's going to be the first feature? And these types of things come with practice. You, you can really learn how to do these types of things. But I think that for me, what I would do is I would look at this model and I would, I would kind of ignore this section over here that's sticking out on the end. And I would just kind of focus on this shape with the rounds. And then I would take that one step further and I would ignore these rounds up top and I would just imagine them as being sharp. And so what that then leaves me with is the the idea of drawing this shape here as the start of my model. So this allows me to figure out what my starting plane is going to be. It's going to be the front plane of the model. And also what my starting sketch is going to look like. It's going to look like this shape here, this kind of uh, U shape as my starting sketch. And then once I have that first shape sketched with the with the sharps, then I can come in here and I can add the fillet. I could either do that as a full round fillet or I could do it as two half round fillets, you know, at, at half of this wall thickness. And then once I have that shape, you know, there and also here, then what I can do is I can easily create this additional extrusion here for this circle. And then I can finish up with either a cut extrude or a whole wizard hole. Uh, creating this countersink here that's running through the entire model. So that's going to be my game plan going into this thing, and it's very important, regardless of what CAD system you're using, that that's where you begin. You begin by just thinking through, how am I going to build this thing? What is my game plan? So now that I've got that game plan in mind, let me move this over to my second monitor, and we will attempt to, uh, we will attempt to create this model here in SolidWorks. So here I am in SolidWorks. I'm going to go... Uh, let me just make this a little bit smaller here. Make this a little easier for everybody to see. There we go. All right. So we're going to click new. And once you click new, we're going to choose a template. Now, your new screen might look like this, or it might even look like this. Uh, what I always advise everybody to do is click on the advanced button when you get to this screen for your templates, and at least choose a template from here. And we'll talk more about templates sometime in the future. But uh, what you want to do is you want to get in the habit of uh, making sure that you're working with the correct units. And those units are going to be found here under options. And then under document properties, so you go options, document properties, really everything that's on this tab here, document properties is stored in your template. So if you find that over and over again, you have to go in and change your units. Like I, I want to be working in millimeters, but every time I'm working in inches and I have to keep changing it, keep changing it. Well, you need to change that option and then do file save as template and make a new template. But again, we'll talk about that more in the future. For now, let's just make sure that we're working with the correct units from the drawing, which is inches i'm sorry millimeters <laughs> and then we're going to go front plane begin a sketch orient our view and we're going to begin creating uh, that shape that we described a moment ago and so we could create that shape maybe by starting up top here and coming down with a line and then doing a single click and then you move away from that line and you come back and you touch that line and that takes you into an arc command now i know that i'm using solidworks here um, but there are some other cad systems that have a similar functionality and you definitely want to learn if your if your software has something like this a line arc line functionality or auto transition to tangent arc functionality this can really uh, make your life a lot easier and make your model creation a lot faster if, it, if your software does have this and if you learn how to use it. So the line arc line functionality, there we go. Now you'll notice that I decided to drop the origin here at this lower corner. In the case of this model, it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, the model is going to be centered, but it doesn't really matter exactly where I put the origin. There are a few different options as to um, how how uh, to create that, you know, that model and where that origin should be. But frankly, 
in this model here, it's not really that important. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to add in my radii. Now, having your radii in the original sketch versus uh, having them in uh, the uh, uh, created later as features is another kind of a debate that people will get into in the world of CAD. In this case, I'm just doing things very uh, uh, fundamentally, kind of getting you to follow fundamentals. But you may come to a point where you decide, like, there's this is way too many sketch relationships, this tangent, 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 tangent. I don't want all these extra sketch relationships. And so I'm just going to make my first sketch sharp and then I'll add those fillets at the feature level and that certainly is a valid strategy. Now at this point we're going to run into a little bit of an issue because we don't have a dimension for the height of this stuff here. We don't have a dimension that gives us a height. The only thing we really have is this 31 that's coming up to uh, this location here. So maybe we want to do a little bit of math like uh, this thing is 16 wide and it's a full round going across the top here. So we can figure that it's 31 plus eight to give us that radius. And sometimes what I'll do in this situation is I'll actually sketch a center line. So I'll create a center line like this, and then I'll create my uh, 31 down here. And then I'll create my dimension from the center line to that top line, and then put that in at eight. So that's certainly an option as well, um, and an option that I've used a lot uh, just to kind of make things a little bit more consistent with the drawing that I get from the customer. Now I'm gonna type in my final dimensions here. Some of these dimensions I'm just kind of going through and, and not necessarily explaining. I think they're they're pretty straightforward, but if, if they're not, let me know in the chat or um, of course you could let me know in the comments if you're watching the recording of this. So what we're hoping for is that our sketch becomes fully defined, meaning everything is black. And, and if it's ever not fully defined, the best trick that I can tell you about is just grab one of the endpoints, grab one of the, the blue endpoints or the endpoint of the blue entity and just drag it around a little bit and then kind of use your, your engineering intuition or geometric intuition. And you can say, hey, you know, it looks like maybe that, uh, that line and arc are not tangent to one another and you can add in that relationship. So now we're going to go to the extrude command. Now for me, I'm going to use what's called the S key on my keyboard. It's one of my favorite uh, features in SolidWorks. Um, uh, but, you know, we could also exit the sketch and then go up to features, our features toolbar up here. So after I exited the sketch, I was able to go to my features toolbar and I was able to choose extrude. And now here I'm going to say I want to extrude that out to a depth of 16. And a lot of times what I do is I right mouse button in the background and I change the end condition to mid plane. I think that's a really handy shortcut because as soon as I do that, I can then again, uh, or then once again, right mouse button. And when I right mouse button, you can see that that finishes out that command. So that's kind of nice. It saves you some mouse travel. Now I'm going to press the S key again, and this is pretty much what the S key looks like when you're in feature mode. It looks a little different when you're in sketch mode, but the, the main thing you want to recognize is that the fillet command is right there on the S key menu. So I just press S on my keyboard and I jump right into the fillet command. And I can say I want this to be a radius of eight, and I can say I want to pick this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge. And wow, that's setting me up pretty nicely. I'm getting you know pretty close to the end of this thing. Now, the next feature I'm going to create is just going to be a circle, but I'm going to sketch it here, sketch the circle here and then extrude it out. And the reason I'm going to I'm going to plan that out ahead of time is because the drawing is giving me this dimension, the 23 dimension. You know, you might instinctively sketch the thing here, but then you have to do like 23 minus 14. And maybe I can't do that math in my head. And so instead, I'm just going to draw the circle over here on this end. And that way I can extrude it right out to the dimension that's on the drawing. That's another good tip, especially if you're just getting started in the world of CAD. Uh, think about where you're creating your original sketches. Now, a lot of CAD programs will have tools that will automatically wake up the center point. That's what I'm doing here. And maybe even automatically hook to uh, an existing end point or an existing edge. And that's what I'm doing over here. And so now I can jump into the extrude command, um, and I did that by pressing the S key. Um, of course, if you press the S key and you don't have the extrude command, you can do a right mouse button customize, and then you can go down to the section for features, features, and then you can drag and drop the extrude command right onto your S key menu. So that way, when you're in sketch mode and you press S, you know, you don't have to exit the sketch. You can just jump right into the extrude command. And that's going to go out to a depth of 32, nope, 23. 
and then I'm going to right mouse button in the background and say reverse direction. See, a lot of these commands that are over here, uh, like the the end condition of mid plane or the reverse direction, you know, a lot of those commands are also right here in your right click menu. And I think a lot of times it's it's a shortcut just to get it right from there. So reverse direction, and then I will right click one more time. And then finally, I will uh, finish up here with a whole wizard hole. Uh, these these dimensions here that are called out in the hole call out. 5.5 millimeter through all hole. So this hole here is 5.5. 11.2 with a 90 degree angle on the C bore. So that's this hole here, 11.2. Um, and a lot of times the the whole call outs, which are you know standardized per the machinist handbook, uh, they will also be standardized in your CAD software, even if it's not what I'm using here, SolidWorks, even if you're using a different CAD software, um, a lot of times you'll find that the the uh, the whole tool, the magical whole tool that you have in your software will um, you know will have similar uh, order of or, call out information like this one here you can see it's got the through hole it's got the uh the countersink diameter and then it's got the angle of the countersink so just like what we have on our print 5.5 i'll just press tab 11.2 i'll press tab and now all i have to do is go to position and i can drop that thing right on the center and right mouse button and boom i'm done with that as well and so to finish this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, right mouse button over here on my material, and I'm going to get into my material library. Um, and if I find that at my company, I'm using the same materials over and over and over again, I'll make sure that I add those materials to my favorite materials, uh, because that way I can just do a right mouse button over here and pick it right from this list of favorites. So in this case, this print is calling out 1060 aluminum alloy. So there we go. I've added that 1060 aluminum alloy. And then I'll finish up by going into my evaluation tool to uh, find out what the total mass of this thing. So 91.99, I'm going to round that up to 92 grams. That's going to be my final answer. And we come over here to the uh, 2D print here. And let's see if we got it correct. The live solve answer is yes. We did it. So um, if you enjoyed that, you know, be sure to let me know in the comments below uh, and be sure to like, and uh, we will definitely be doing some more of these live solves or of these solves of these practice models.